Welcome back to a special edition of your Hog Hoops Report. I'm Courtney Mims, and you know Kevin McPherson there, but you may not know our special guest this week. We have on the show this time around, 2024 recruit Jesse Yoshi Nemo, and you go by Yoshi, so you got to tell us about that. But for those of Arkansas fans who don't know who you are, tell us a little bit about yourself and your family, and you got to tell us where you got the nickname Yoshi. Well, my real name is Jesse. Uh, named after my father and my grandfather, but I go more known as Yoshi because it was a nickname given to me by my Japanese grandfather that uh, stands for justice. Um, I play, I currently play professional basketball in Japan in the B League for a team called the Mikawa Seahorses. And uh, currently, I'm the youngest player in the entire league. Uh, yeah. Uh, I come from a family that has a very rich history of basketball that includes my sister currently playing Division One basketball at Cal State Fullerton. Uh, my dad also used to play at the college level, and he also used to play professional basketball in Japan. Uh, my mom never played that much basketball growing up. She was more of a volleyball player, but uh, she has very great knowledge for the game of basketball and she studies it a lot uh I believe I get the height from her because she's six foot tall wow uh, yeah uh a lot of people also don't know that my godfather uh was in the NBA and is in the hall of fame named Bob McAdoo he spent wow. 14 seasons he spent 14 seasons in the NBA and it was current and it was recently named to the 75th anniversary team so as you can see, uh, my life was majorly censored around the game of basketball, and I love it. Yeah, that is big incredible. Big-time player. Bob McAdoo, big-time player with those Laker title teams in the 80s. Huge. I mean, yeah. that's incredible. I mean, your family is truly, when they say basketball family, your family is it. They, you got to be what comes up in the dictionary next to basketball family. That's incredible. Yeah. I yeah. love that. And I love the nickname Yoshi having such a familial aspect to you guys as well. That's so cool. Justice. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. I love that. I love that. You talked a little bit about you playing in Japan. We're going to get to that uh, in the interview. But first, before we get there, you played in Haines City, Florida, correct? Yes, ma'am. Right. And your dad was the coach there. Am I right on that, too? Yes. So what was it like playing for your dad uh, those years that you got to play in Haines City? Uh, playing under my dad, uh, being the coach on the high school team was something I was already used to. Um, he also coached me during uh, AAU uh, travel ball throughout uh, my middle school years. And he coached me my freshman year at a different school named Geneva Academy, where I was recently coming off an injury. Um, although he's my dad, he still pressured me to uh, get better uh, every day and work hard as well as the rest of the players. He had he has great knowledge and feel for the game, as well as experience, and he always spread his wisdom to the players he coached. Uh, there's times where I was hated by a lot of people because they would always bring up how he's my coach, but I always blocked out the negativity and I never listened to the people hating. Uh, going into my senior year, though, I decided to leave Haines City to, uh, I would say, push myself to another limit because I had lots of uh, love and respect to my teammates, but I knew if I kept playing in that environment that I wouldn't get as much better. So instead, I was uh, blessed with the opportunity to travel across the world to Japan to play professional basketball at only 17 years old. I mean, that's just incredible. I know you brought that up in your tell us about yourself part, but that is one of the yeah. coolest things I think a 17 year old gets to do in their life, go across seas away from home, play professional basketball in Japan. And, and that's a country that has ties to your family. What went into mm -hmm. the decision making to go over there and play professional basketball? Uh, much similar to uh, what I said before, uh, it was just a greater opportunity to get better at the game, my love, and closer to my dreams of uh, playing in the NBA. 
Uh, I also understood that going there would help me mature much more as a person, such as uh, currently living by myself and having to take care of myself, preparing me uh, for the real world as I get uh, closer each day to being a full adult. I also knew playing under the coach, uh, Coach Ryan, would progress my game much faster and it would get me to the level I want to be at at since he was a former NBA coach himself. Uh, also playing for my country and representing it while doing what I love was definitely an opportunity I definitely I definitely couldn't have passed up. Absolutely. I don't think a lot of 17 year olds would have passed up the opportunity, especially to live on your own. I mean, that's so cool and awesome. <laughs> uh, and getting to mature yeah. like that. Oh, that's so cool. Speaking of living yeah. on your own, what does your daily schedule look like over there? For those of us who don't know what playing professional basketball overseas is like, take us through a day in the life of Yoshi in Japan. Uh, currently, my daily schedule uh, for the practice days, it consists of waking up very early, uh, around 7 a.m. or 7.30. Uh, players uh, like me usually get to the gym at around two hours before practice to get uh, a light workout in, such as lifting weights or just getting shots up or even uh, prehab for your body. Uh, people also think, even though that I play professional ball now, that I don't have to go to school no more, which is uh, sadly not the case. <laughs> After practice, uh, I still have to do homework and schoolwork and online classes since I still haven't graduated yet. So uh, I'm usually in the gym at for around six hours or five. I usually get home at around 3 p.m. and start my classes at four. And on off days where we don't have practice, uh, I still manage to wake up uh, before 10 at least in the morning. And I still get a workout in home, such as uh, push-ups, jumping jacks, or sit-ups, et cetera. And then I begin my schoolwork in the morning. Wow. That is a full schedule. You do not lie. I like that yeah. you said, uh, sadly, I, I still have to go to class. <laughs> Unfortunately, yeah. I still have to do schooling, but that's good. We're, we want you to do that. We want you to get an education as well while you get to pursue your dreams. Before I uh, pass it over to Kevin, ask his questions. Best part, in your opinion, about Japan? It's one place I've always wanted to go to. So what's the best part about living there? Uh, I'd say the best part is the the sights of the country. It has very beautiful uh, buildings and architects. And I also love uh, the, the people here, how they take uh, lots of pride in what they do and their, their work. And they're just, and they're very positive. Yeah. I love that. I love that. Great answer. Kevin, I'll, I'll pass it over to you now. I know you got a couple of questions for Yoshi too. I've got to talk. I've been entertained by this. I'm, 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 I'm a spectator <laughs> up, up until this point. All right. Yoshi, great answers. You know, really I want to tell Razorback fans, Arkansas has been recruiting you. Let's start with that. And also class of 2024, but your NIL representation, Ramon Sessions on time agency tells me that uh -huh. you might be over there for as much as many as two years. Are you also considering a reclassification then? Because 2024 can sign early here in November. Are you still looking at college opportunities later on? Is there a possibility that you reclass 2025? Uh, I'm still looking at the, uh, the college route after this year. Uh, okay. To me, it just depends on how this year goes for me. Gotcha. How the season goes. And uh, to see if I'm ready for the college opportunity. Well, I saw your numbers in high school last year. I've, I've actually seen you play, seen you out in, in, on the circuit a couple of times over the last year or so. Uh, but 6'6 six, six with a 7'1 wingspan. Tell me the strengths of your game, because I see a guy that's a knockdown shooter that can do other things and has gotten better defensively. But where do you see your game right now? Uh, I see my game. Uh, progressing a lot with the training that I'm currently doing right now. Uh, I'm working on my ball handling skills and uh, just overall becoming a more smart player, like reading the floor and making better passes and uh, moving off the ball. 
Okay. Mm -hmm. Talk about your shooting a little bit, because I, I see a shooter. You didn't get into that. Maybe you don't want to brag on yourself, but is that one of the strengths of your game? Uh, yeah, it's definitely one of the strengths of my game. Uh, I practice shooting a lot. Uh, even with my dad uh, in Florida, I used to have a shooting machine in the high school I was at, and I would get almost a thousand shots a day. And even during quarantine, when I had a leg injury, uh, my dad managed to uh, build himself like an at-home shooting machine where like the ball rolls back, so you'd yeah. have to chase everywhere. But I would get lots of shots up every day, even during quarantine in the backyard. All right. Now, we know Arkansas is recruiting you. Let me refresh fans' memories because there's so many different – you know, once you get off season, but you were on campus in, in February of this mm -hmm. in 2023, this in kind of the end of the 22, 23 season, you're from Florida. You were there for unofficial visit. You also attended the Arkansas Florida game at Bud Walton Arena in Fayetteville. Please tell us about yeah. your experience. I'm, I'd love to hear about that. What you thought of Arkansas, your experience on that visit. Uh, my visit to Arkansas, was, it was a very great experience. Uh, definitely something I will never forget. Uh, from seeing the players routine and watching them practice to seeing them uh, dominate versus Florida with it was lots of fans it was thousands of fans uh, to me that was the best part of the visit in my opinion because the energy at the stadium was just unmatched and one of the most hyped crowds I've ever been in I've never seen it uh, meeting coach Musk and the rest of the staff was also a great experience as uh, they were full of energy, and they were very fun to be around. Uh, I was also glad to see the assistant, the assistant coach, Keith Smart. Uh, he was at a couple of my AU games this past summer. Yeah. But I look forward to seeing the Razorbacks, who recently began their NBA career, uh, yeah. succeed this upcoming season. And I also wish luck to the uh, the new Razorback players for their – a uh, new season as their practice starts this week. Yeah, and look, one of the former Hogs you're just talking about is going to be a rookie this year, Anthony Black. He's got one of those A-list mm -hmm. hair games, but I think you could give him a yeah. run for his money. Did you guys talk about that at all <laughs> oh, while you yeah. were there? Are you are you, are you feeling that you <laughs> might be able to take him in a in a hair off? Uh, I don't know. Uh, yeah, that I came out know. of left field, but I thought I'd see what you thought about that. <laughs> I think. Hey, I'm I, think, I think they both have some sweet hairstyles. I don't know if you can put them up against each other because they might right. both win. They're so good. Right. It's like art. You just appreciate it. You don't make them compete. I yeah. get it. You just got to appreciate right. it. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, Yoshi, you're, you're, a, you're far away from home. I, I thought uh, Courtney did a great job going through some of that with you. But this first year, mm -hmm. so far even, what are some things that are already challenges or what are some things that have kind of you know, maybe or different or, you know, how's it going getting into year one? Uh, some of the challenges uh, that I'm going through playing here is uh, probably communicating because uh, I don't know lots of Japanese, I only know a little bit like uh, the basics, but uh, having a coach that speaks English helps a lot and the translators on the team. It helps a lot. Also having uh, some American teammates. Uh, another challenge for me was uh, being so far from home because uh, at first it was a little difficult leaving my friends and family in Florida and the time difference uh, making it hard to communicate at times with them. But I would say I, I got used to it uh, pretty quickly because I got along with the team and the organization very fast along with the fans. And it made me feel better about it. Uh, Ramon and my dad uh, already came to Japan to visit me and help me get prepared and set up for my time staying here. So that helped a lot. Uh, my mom also recently just landed in Japan, uh, in Tokyo, uh, last night and is staying with my grandparents a few days before she comes sees me. And uh, I would say those are just the two. Uh, I would say problems I was having. Gotcha. And what about goals? You got goals for year one. I guarantee you that. I know you're probably looking forward to reaching some of those. Uh, to me, 
uh, the goal for the team would be uh, winning the championships in the tournaments that we play in. And because I feel like we're one of the top teams in the league and in Japan because uh, our staff pushes us to be better every day. And I feel like we have the best staff. Uh, for myself, uh, I don't expect unrealistic stats like 40 point games or triple double games my first year since I'm such a young player uh even though I feel like I'm highly skilled at basketball for my age uh professional basketball is a whole nother level like the the difference between professional players and just AU players it's a crazy difference from the size the physic the physical stats uh just a whole other player uh but to me it's just all about getting better every day and pushing myself to become a better person than I was yesterday well you certainly got the basketball pedigree your godfather was one of my favorite players back in the 70s and 80s he would be a guy that would fit in today's game six nine and yeah. had shooting skill all the way on the floor could put it on the deck he was a scoring champion he was a, a vital part on some of those Laker teams that are considered dynasty yeah. at the time when it was the dynasty in the eighties. So uh, I thought that was really mm -hmm. cool when you shared that. I did not know that. Yeah. So thank yeah. you. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's also really cool that you, uh, that you recognize the differences in pro ball overseas. A lot of people don't understand the, the, the differences and how awesome it is that you're actually getting this opportunity. My, my dad uh, coached, years and years uh overseas in europe so we we actually got to he got to oh, match up against some really cool teams over there i got to see some japanese basketball and some of his former players actually play uh over in japan now yeah. as professional basketball players so hey never know maybe you might see someone that uh, i recognize when you when you go match up with uh, some of the other teams over there so that's really really cool but it has been a pleasure to have you on the show with us yoshi um it's been so Thank cool you. getting to know you and i i really hope mm -hmm. that you have a great season over there in japan and that uh you you do everything that you're hoping to do and that you win some championships come on we want you to at 17 win some pro <laughs> basketball championships right go get them go Thank get them yoshi yeah it's a very <laughs> so big goal yes i love it i love it well thank you so much for being on the show we appreciate having you thank you and uh we'll thank have much you. more coming up on the hog hoops report with kevin mcpherson on sunday so make sure you tune in then